<laughs> the, um, the situation is, is that I believe that we should be informed as to how our body works. We should have the information. And I brought up the conversation about how women are sort of young women as a sort of trend are lasering off all of it at once. Forevermore. For Thank you very much forevermore. And I just want to say to the women who think at this moment, for whatever reason, whether it's because they've seen it and they think that it's sexy or that their man said it's sexy or whatever, they're tired of dealing with it. <laughs> that um, I believe that if you're doing something forever, ever, <laughs> and don't come back. <laughs>Hey everyone, welcome to the news. I'm Lacey Green. There's a noticeable trend these days toward removing pubic hair, a fad that's pretty new given that in the past it wasn't as much of a thing. Definitely not in the 70s. Our parents loved their pubes. As far back as the 1400s, pubic hair was fashionable. In fact, if someone had to remove it, like if they had lice, there were pubic wigs called merkins that people would wear until it grew back, which I actually just think is, <laughs> is hilarious, a pubic wig. Gripes that we hear these days about oral sex and pubic hygiene are relatively new, and so too are the array of razors, tweezers, electric shavers, waxes, creams, expensive hair removal procedures, all with the aim of keeping you clean and sexy. But is pubic hair really that dirty and terrible? Scientifically speaking, no. Pubic hair itself actually serves some important evolutionary functions. It's a protector of the treasure. It exists to provide a bumper from the irritating friction of sex. It also serves to keep harmful bacteria and pathogens out. Pubic hair also harbors pheromones, an erotic scent unique to each person that you subconsciously pick up on in a partner. There are more obvious practicalities as well. If you have sensitive skin, shaving super sucks. It can be irritating because the hair removal inflames the hair follicles, which can cause itchy, burny, nasty discomfort. This irritation, when paired up with the moist environment that is the genitalia, creates a perfect place for unpleasant bacteria to grow. Strep, staph oils, cellulitis, and pustules on the genitals are more common in people who shave regularly. Shaving and waxing also make you more vulnerable to sexually transmitted infections that spread by touching, such as herpes or genital warts, because it's easier to contract with little tiny openings in your skin. Of course, shaving isn't a certain recipe for disaster, and lots of people do it, and they don't get pustules or herpes or anything terrible. It can be fun, a way to change it up, to feel extra sexy, but it is a personal thing that, in light of the medical facts, isn't necessarily for everyone. Basically, you should be free to do you, whatever that is.